In this video, I'm going to discuss the basic premise of this documentary, Contradiction, A Question of Faith, by Jeremiah Kamara. You can see the picture of it here, and you can see a quote from him over here to the left, saying, Intoxication with religious faith, prayer, and belief, and worship will continue to lead you to the slaughter. Now, of course, the Bible would completely agree with that statement just as what happened to Jesus and so many people in the Bible such as Stephen and Paul and so forth. So Jeremiah Kamara is the filmmaker. You can see him here. Now there's quite a few points made in the documentary Contradiction a Question of Faith but the basic premise of the documentary can be found here in this clip. Here you go. Why if, are there so many churches and why are we doing so badly as black people, as a group, despite the extreme number of churches? And do you think that there is a correlation between our high praise and our low productivity? Hmm. Now let me see, this is a very uh, challenging uh, question. Okay, now this pastor, which I don't know who it is, but apparently has some relation to Martin Luther King Jr., does not know how to answer his question. And in general, as I said, this is the basic question that is asked in Jeremiah Kamara's documentary. And it's presented as if there's not only no answer, but it leads to further conclusions that Christianity is basically a farce. So we can see here with Jeremiah Kamara's bio here on Google it says he's the director and producer of the documentary film Contradiction a Question of Faith which examines the saturation of churches and African American communities coexisting with poverty and powerlessness okay so what Jeremiah Kamara is talking about is basically what is known as the prosperity gospel the idea that if you worship Jesus you there's some expected result of financial gain or power, gain of power in the world, increase of status, increase of socioeconomic ranking, and so forth. In general, this is called the prosperity gospel. It's very popular with many of the very large uh, pastors, televangelists, but as is well known, it's in contradiction with the gospel. So the prosperity gospel is in contradiction with the actual gospel, in other words, the Bible, it's because there is no formula where, if you it, written about in the Bible, where if you worship the Lord, worship Christ, are a Christian, then you gain certain changes in your wealth and socioeconomic status. There is no do A and B happens. There are instances in the Bible where, due to someone's devotion to God, they do gain wealth. Uh, to put it vaguely, one example is Solomon, where he prayed for wisdom and God was so happy with that that the Lord gave him riches. But most examples of the people in the Bible, the prophets in the Bible, involve them being poor or, in many cases, homeless. Jesus himself was homeless. They're often tortured and killed, uh, penniless. So the prosperity gospel, to say that if you worship the Lord, you'll have riches and status and wealth and fame and, and socioeconomic increase to some degree, you know, which is greater than before you were a Christian and or increases through time, is simply a contradiction to the Bible. So Jeremiah Kamara is actually not talking about the true Bible in his documentary. He's talking about a theology that's been developed by many churches, which exists in very significant proportions of the religion of Christianity and probably you know there could be a billion people on earth who believe the prosperity gospel is the case that if we worship Christ he'll reward us with riches when the Bible simply contradicts that the entire Bible will back up this point that I'm making but let's just look at some quick verses here first very important verse Matthew 11:25, which reads in the NIV at that time Jesus said I praise you father Lord of heaven and earth because you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to little children okay so who are the children here the children are the ones who are having the 
teachings of God given to them. As we'll see in a moment when we analyze what these things that are hidden are in Matthew 11. So, but who are the children that have these things revealed to them? Here's another verse. Take a look at this one. Psalm 119, verse 130. Same sort of idea. The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. So the teachings of the Lord are for those who are children, for those who are simple. And see here the NIRV does not use the word simple, but uses childish people. When your words are made clear, they bring light, they bring understanding to childish people. Then here the NLV also uses instead of simple child, or in this case childlike, the opening of your word gives light, it gives understanding to the childlike. So we're talking about the simple and the childlike here as being the same thing. And that is in contrast to, here look at Romans 12, 16. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your opinion. Look at the end there. Do not be wise in your opinion. Matthew eleven twenty five says, The wise have the teachings of the Lord hidden from them. So the high-minded and the wise are the opposite, those are the ones who are opposite of the childlike, of the simple. And we know that the wise being referred to here are not those who are wise in the wisdom of the Lord, but are wise in worldly information. Because it says wise and learned. Learned would be having worldly information. So this is a human wisdom about things of the world rather than the wisdom of the Lord which is implanted into a person. So the wisdom of the human, of worldly information, is the opposite of those who are simple, who are childlike, who have the revelation of the Lord revealed to them. Those who have the wisdom of the world and who are learned in the world have the message of the Lord hidden from them. Now I would say it's safe to conclude here that Matthew 11.25 is saying that it is those at the poorer end of the socioeconomic spectrum that have the messages of God revealed to them, not on the wealthier end, the more, quote, prestigious, unquote, end of the spectrum. Look at this verse here, Matthew six twenty four. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in money. So that lays it home right there. So the poor are the ones who most readily, by far, can apprehend, understand, and have delivered to them the message of God. Now that may sound strange to people, but we have to remember something I've discussed on many other videos. The wisdom of the Lord is often the opposite of the world. That's something that's been discussed by many theologians through history, such as Martin Luther. We can spell it out with biblical terms, though. The works of the world are evil, John 7, 7. So therefore, God will work in the opposite way of the works of the world. So if our minds are attuned to the ways the world is, the works of the world, what we will find God doing is surprising us by acting the opposite way. So those who can receive his message are not the great kings and the wealthy men, but often those who are forgotten and destitute and so forth just like all those people described in that way in the Bible. Most prophets, most disciples and so forth of, of God, of Christ in the Bible, are extremely poor, if not homeless. There's just a few exceptions, mostly in the Old Testament, of, of that rule. So what we've established so far is that it is the poor who are understanding the message of God. Now, people may not like this. People may think this is crazy and weird. That's fine. All I'm doing is showing what the Bible says. So Jeremiah Kamara, in his video, what he is expecting is that if someone has God, they should be wealthy and powerful. But the Bible, again, to repeat, does not teach that message. Jeremiah Kamara just doesn't have enough theological knowledge, knowledge of the Bible. So his criticism of the Bible is a straw man. 
as we'll discuss more as we go on. So these verses that we've discussed establish these points. These kinds of verses flood the Bible. Those who are in the lower end of the socioeconomic scale, these are the ones who in general, not always, but in general, have a better aptitude for the teachings of God because their minds are not clouded and polluted with the world. So again, the way how we got to this point is simply through scripture. The Bible verses, a few that we've just so, shown so far, we're going to see more in a second. And they show a very clear problem and contradiction with Jeremiah Kamara's film. I think what Jeremiah Kamara was wanting to do is come out and say, I've got a searing contradiction, which not only destroys Christianity, church theology or whatnot, but furthermore, it shows that it actually harms African American people. That can be his opinion. That may be someone who's listening their opinion. But the Bible has an answer for that. The ways of God and the people of God will also be in a stark contrast to what the world thinks they would be like, such as being rich and powerful because they're with God. It, but regardless if you agree or not, the point is that the Bible has this answer covered and Jeremiah Kamar doesn't bring this up. This is a standard 101 foundational topic in Christianity that Christianity is about the poor. The poor are the ones who understand the gospel is preached to the poor. They're, the poor are favored over the rich. Read, Matthew, read Luke 6. Okay, it's very clear. And Jeremiah Kamar just doesn't bring this up. He probably doesn't even know because he's preaching the same theology that the corrupted churches of today preach, which is the prosperity gospel. Worship Jesus and then you'll get rewarded in the world. No. Your treasure is gathered in heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is where? Luke seventeen twenty one. It's in you, not in the world. Because you are not of the world. It's Philippians 3.20, our citizenship is in heaven. And it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So anyway, let me continue on here. But as you can see, what we're doing here is we're showing that Jeremiah Kamara's video, while may sound convincing and impressive, simply doesn't have Bible knowledge. Or, and what we're going to explain here in a second is that it has church knowledge, where church knowledge and Bible knowledge are in conflict just as it says will happen in the Bible as we approach the end time. And what does this tell us with respect to Jeremiah Kamara's film? That the reason that there's so many churches among African American people, why there's so much worship percentage-wise in that community compared to others, is because they are the poorest. This is exactly, this is a point that Jeremiah misses in his film. He thinks that the reason they are poor is because Christianity puts them down. Now, he would need some evidence to make that claim empirical or scientific or quite convincing. He does not present any such evidence that what's going on is that the churches are keeping down the African American people in the United States. He just presents the correlation. He even says in the clip that I showed you from the film right at the start of this video, he describes it as a correlation. And we all know from critical thinking class, critical thinking 101, that a correlation does not mean there's, there's a cause and effect relationship. The way to establish if there's cause and effect is if A causes B, if you remove A and B ceases to exist, then we know there's causation. Jeremiah Kamar doesn't talk about any of these issues. He just presents the correlation and assumes that many of the listeners will go along with it. So the video is completely non-scientific. It's a very simple film and not one of real proper erudite uh, analysis that can lead us to a conclusion. So the Bible's conclusion, at the very least, is equal in its veracity to Jeremiah Kamara's conclusion, but you really probably could say the Bible's conclusion is stronger because, at least logically speaking, the Bible's conclusion makes more sense. 
The conclusion on the left there, that churches lead to the oppression of African American people, seems to conflict with, in many cases, you can just tour around many churches and find lots of wealth among certain churches. So that conclusion on the left of Jeremiah Kamara seems to be logically unstable, where at least the logic on the right, the biblical explanation for the high percentage of worship among Amer African Americans, at least is consistent logic without contradictions and instability. So Jeremiah Kamara does not have a reason to claim that his conclusion that churches are oppressing black people is a stronger conclusion than the Bible's conclusion, where the Bible's conclusion is that there's a preponderance of worship among African American people because they are of the poor in general. Not always. It is because they are the poorest that they should have the highest amount of worshipfulness among their community from coast to coast in the United States. So exactly what the Bible predicts is the case. Now I think what people are going to be thinking is, it's a simple equation that we're developing here. You have the poor strata of society, you're going to have a higher percentage of uh, believing people because of the gospel message being revealed to them and hidden from the wise and uh, arrogant. And therefore that's why we have these churches and that's all great. But there's another part of the equation we have to add in quick, it's just as an aside, but something we have to note, that there are a lot of churches means that there's a lot of corrupted churches. To be the church is to be corrupted by infiltrators who are filled with sinfulness. Okay, we know that right from when the New Testament starts talking about the church in Acts and then 1 Corinthians, and then on through the rest of the New Testament, the church, if you have the church, you have a church that is corrupted by those who enter it full of sinfulness. That's the point of the church. Okay, so this idea that the churches are going to be these spotless domains is completely off. The, the, the church is where the sick people go. Okay, those who don't need a doctor because they're wise and, and so forth are those who aren't sick. Now you might think, well, wait, hey, that's great to be not sick. But the way I look at it is as follows. If you're not sick and things are going all right in your life, that means that the devil is not attacking you. I know when I became a Christian, I was undergoing tremendous, out of the blue, crazy spiritual attacks. They appeared as sort of as what you could call mental illness symptoms, as I've discussed many times on this YouTube channel and on the radio, Coast to Coast AM and so forth. But they were actually satanic attacks. And I realize that not everybody listening to this agrees with this, and a lot of people think this is just crazy. That's fine. I, I understand that. And I have no scientific proof to offer you to back up my position. It's uh, in the domain of experience. So the point is, is that progressed over my life and suddenly hit me like a truck that I was having satanic attacks, and I was sick and needed a hospital. Okay? All the while, I notice other people who don't, and they're not Christians. They're, hey, their life's going okay. That's because they're right where the devil wants them, the enemy wants them, and there's no need to attack them. They're not chosen by God. They will, be, they will go through the refiner's fire at the end of the world before they're saved, 1 Corinthians 5, 5. So anyway, you might have to replay that, but that's an explanation of how this all works. To sum up though, briefly, if you have the lower or, lower or lowest socioeconomic strata of society and you have a preponderance of higher percentage of churches there, that doesn't mean that's all great. It means that you have a higher percentage of corrupted churches because to be in, of the church is to be corrupted just like we see when Jesus was on earth and the church people killed him before he resurrected. Okay, so you have to kind of put this all together in your mind. There's a lot of this is not the way Christians typically think about Christianity and the church and so forth. But this is what the Bible says. It's just unfortunate that Christians typically don't read the Bible in most cases. That might sound, a lot of people, I say that to a lot of people and they, oh, I can't believe it. What are you talking about, Jeff? It's just so outrageous that I say that. Go read 1 Corinthians 5. 
especially right there, four, three, sorry, five, three, five, four, five, 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 six, and you realize a whole world of theology that has just not been discussed by the churches for a thousand years or 1500 since some of the early church fathers which really shows that the churches right now are sending out a false message of <laughs> it's just truly amazing and that I've discussed it a little bit another it's just too much to get into right now let's just move on the, what the atheist should do when seeing a video like this is say okay my view has been challenged my ideas have been shown to be incorrect or at least missing several points that this video we've just watched here that I've made brings up so the atheist should say I need to correct my view I need to put my conclusions on the shelf until I can get better analysis in other words they should follow the logic of this but my experience is the atheist will not do that the atheist has an agenda they will tell you we follow the logic, we follow science, we follow reason, and the Christians are the masters of blind faith. But the opposite is the case. You can present the atheist with sufficient evidence to either refute their position, or let's not even go that far, let's say at least show that they've missed some points in the Bible, and they need to sharpen their pencil, so to speak. But the atheist won't do that. In my experience, I've been very surprised by this. They won't follow the logic. They will follow their agenda. And often it becomes sort of a lynching party sort of scenario. They get all riled up and lots of ha ha ha, lots of guffaws at, at theism and so forth. Those guffaws are meant to be intimidation factors. It's sort of like the academic who's standing up at the podium presenting a thesis that he doesn't have sufficient evidence for, and people start questioning him, then he pounds his hand on the desk. It is the case. You must believe this. You know, pounding his hand on the desk. The desk pounding there is meant to try to convince, to convey, to persuade, to get people to go along with. That's what the atheist guffaw is all about. <laughs> oh, the theists are ridiculous. No, all we are to do is follow evidence. That's how we find the truth. Okay, and what Christianity is about is about experiential awareness of God. The atheist who says Christianity is about blind faith is self-evidently wrong because in the Bible those who follow Christ are those who don't have blind faith but have direct experience of God. Paul on the road to Damascus has a vision so powerful it burns his eyes out. A vision of Christ. Is that blind faith? No. By definition, it is not blind faith. Blind faith is when you believe in something you have no experience of, such as a Big Bang singularity. Okay? For just to give one example. Anyway, so the atheist needs to follow the logic, needs to follow the reasoning. So I say to the atheist, do you really want to know the truth? Because I don't think the atheist does. I think the atheist is mad, and they like the position that they have and they like the attention that it brings to them. They do not follow logic and most of the science that they discuss is really just theoretical information which has no empirical basis such as the aforementioned Big Bang Singularity which nobody's ever observed. So let me wrap this up. I could go on for a long time. But lastly I would say I would like to invite Jeremiah Kamara to a public discussion, debate friendly chat about these issues. It could be on a YouTube channel, his YouTube channel or wherever. So I'd like to just put that out there. Thanks for watching.